Hi, George here. Let's take a look at the Elements Plus plugin for Photoshop Elements. Currently, I'm in version 2024, but there are versions of this plugin for all versions of Photoshop Elements. Now, what the Elements Plus plugin is, is a collection of tools that brings back in a lot of functionality that you'll find over in the more advanced Adobe Photoshop program. So it really opens up Photoshop Elements and in a lot of ways makes it much more like Adobe's Photoshop. Now, when you install this plugin, You'll find it in a few places. You'll find it over here under the File menu and Automation Tools, right down through here. All these are Elements Plus plugin options. You'll find it up under the Window menu and in Actions. At the very bottom here of the Actions, you'll find quite a few Elements Plus actions right down through here. And you'll also find it over in the Effects panel, right-hand side. This is where I normally go to this. And it's broken down into several basic sections. We have Color and Tone, Selections, Layers, Styles, Masks, Smart Filters, Paths, Text, Scripts, Animation, Raw Corrections, and also some Tool Presets. Now there is an additional way of installing this plugin, and you'll see all those options up here as well. So we also have down here data-driven graphics, for instance, and slices, and some work in here for tweaks and landscapes and portraits. A lot of this stuff is bringing in some of the Elements Plus actions that we saw under the window menu over here under Actions. Let's see a few of the things that become available here with the Elements Plus plugin. Now I'll be showing you where you can find and download this plugin towards the end of this video. But let's first take a look and see what is included. We'll start off here with the color and tone. Double-click brings up the color and tone dialog box. Notice that this breaks this down into channels. We have curves and auto curves, again, something which is available in Photoshop and not here. Color balance, black and white exposure, vibrant selective color. Come down just a little bit. Some real interesting tools down here. For instance, color lookup. Bring that up, choose OK. And this allows you to work with color lookup or LUT files. Now these are presets that will control the colors in your image. And there are a lot of these presets available online. You can download these for Photoshop, and this allows Photoshop Elements to use all of these LUT presets. For instance, here is a cold contrast. We'll take a look at this in our preview, and there's that cold contrast look. So it's a great way of adding in just loads of these color presets. I'll use the Control Z to back out of that step. There we go. Bring this back up again. We also have a channel mixer. Notice how these are coming in on their own separate layers as well. You bring that up. There's that separate layer. Comes in as an adjustment layer, giving us more control. Back over here again. We also can split channels, and this allows us to split an image up into its separate channels. Now, a color channel comes in as a black and white image, just like these, and then when these are combined through the correct color filter, they become the full color image. That's how RGB works. And something, for instance, which you can do with channels, which you can't normally do with the regular Photoshop elements, is to use channels to find the best individual channel for making layer masks. For instance, if I wanted to, mask out her hair in here from her jacket. Relatively difficult in here, mostly because we have browns in here and oranges. They're very similar in a lot of ways, which makes it difficult to get good separation in there. But with channels, you can see here, we have very good separation between the hoodie in the back and the hair in the front, if we're looking at the red channel right there. Blue channel, they're almost exactly the same. Green channel, kind of yes and no, but we can use the red channel to really do a great mask in there. So just one of the ways of being able to separate these things out. Going over here to selections, I just did a recent video selecting by color range. Again, something that you can't do normally. We also have access to the quick mask mode, which has kind of been combined into the quick mask brush inside of Photoshop Elements, but it's not exactly what it used to be. This is the old quick mask mode, which a lot of people prefer working with. And again, we can do masks in here on separate channels. Bring up our layers. And let's see, we have convert to embedded object, convert to linked layer, open as embedded object, open as linked object. What we're really talking about in here with these linked objects is we're talking about smart layers. A smart layer links to the original image. So this is beginning to bring back in some smart object options, which again are available in Photoshop and not in Photoshop elements. Moving on down here, we have styles. Let's just take a quick kind of visual glance at this. Let me close this down. This compares to the Layer Styles dialog box we have up here. Layer, Layer Style, Style Settings. Here is the standard Layer Styles inside of Photoshop Elements. We have a few things, Drop Shadow, Glow, Bevel, and Stroke, and a couple of slider controls in here, and we can adjust the lighting angle. 
And that's pretty much it. Over here though, we have a much more advanced layer styles dialog box, including controlling the blend mode for the overall layer style right here and the opacity, advanced blending options, blend clip layers as a group, transparency shapes, layers, lots of interesting things in here. There's also a blend if option down below. Now the blend if over inside of Photoshop is one of the most used tools for doing really advanced blending controls. Left hand side we have drop shadow, inner shadow is new, we have outer inner glow. These are both available inside of the Photoshop Elements layer styles. We have Land Emboss, of course, but this adds in the contour and texture. There's also satin, color overlay, gradient overlay, and pattern overlay, all things that are not available normally inside of Elements, and the stroke right down here. Now notice on all of these things, there's this little enabled button over here. That's just like checking that checkbox inside the layer styles. But once that's open, we have a lot more in here as far as control. We have structure and shading. This is our lighting. You can use different lighting settings for these as well. We have different layer styles in here, different techniques, chisel hard, chisel soft. Now see chisel hard in here. This again is something which is not available normally inside of Photoshop Elements. We also have a contour down here and this controls the contour of the bevel and emboss. And this one right down here, ring, this is the standard tool to use over inside of Adobe Photoshop if you want to get a really good metallic look, like the really nice chrome effect or really nice gold effect on lettering. That's done with that ring option right down here, which again, we don't normally have this inside of Elements. We also can break this down into just the contour and we can add in textures as well. So you can put textures into your bevel and emboss. Again, this brings in a lot more functionality that is available over in Photoshop, but not available in Photoshop Elements. Getting even fancier, we have some advanced controls in for working with layer masks. And notice up here we have pixel mask settings. The pixel mask, this is what we're making normally inside of Photoshop Elements. We also have vector masks inside of Photoshop Elements using the Elements Plus plugin. So you have two masks that you can use on one individual image, which can be very useful at times. But vectors, again, just standard vectors are something which Elmas has a real hard time working with. There's just a few things that do vectors and there's not very much control on those. And this brings back in the vector mask. Over here we have scripts. And notice that these only work on smart objects, but this converts the image into a smart object. Again, we have smart object layers or smart layers instead of elements, but we don't have smart objects. And what this does is it allows us to bring in all of these different filter effects, but it makes these filter effects editable. So we can put it in and then come back to it later and change it if we want to. All of the filters normally inside of Elements, you place it on and you're done, you're stuck with it. But this allows us to come back and make adjustments later. So again, very, very useful if you want to get more advanced control inside of Photoshop Elements. Coming down here, here's a whole section on path. Now a path is a vector path, a vector graphic path. So that you normally cannot work with here inside of Elements, but you can work with paths through the Elements Plus plugin. There are also some more type controls in here. We have some templates. Here's your text inside a circle. Here's text outside a circle. These are things that I show some kind of complicated videos on how to manage that. It's all done for you here. Just one click and you're all set. Wavy text, parabola text, upstairs, downstairs, swirling in, swirling out. All kinds of really interesting ways of controlling the shape of a text line. There are also some more scripts over in here. And here's one that everybody talks about, and it's focus stacking, something which you cannot do inside of Elements normally, but you can do focus stacking with the Elements Plus plugin. There's also one here for frequency separation. You can do frequency separation inside of Elements. I've done videos in the past on how to set that up. It's a little bit tricky, but it's not that bad. This does it for you automatically. There are also some animation settings in here. If you like doing animations, you can do some of that stuff here. There is a timeline control over in Adobe Photoshop allowing you to do some animations over there. This gives you some of that in here inside of Elements. It's not as advanced as what we have in Photoshop, but it is a whole lot more than you can normally do with Photoshop Elements. Elements Plus also comes with its own Camera Raw editor in here. We have our basic adjustments right here, graduated filters, we sit in curves, color mixers, hue saturation and luminance, color grading in here, optics, geometry settings, grain and vignetting effects, camera calibrations if you need that for your camera, and you can save these things out as presets. Now I happen to like the camera editor that comes with Photoshop Elements. I think it's pretty good. 
It has a lot of stuff in there. In most cases, it has all you need, but there are a few tricks in here that you can't do with that editor. So if you wanna have all of the tricks available to you, this is a great way to go. And finally, you can save different settings in here as custom tool presets. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do here with the Elements Plus plugin brings back in a lot of functionality. So if you've been working with Elements and you are wishing that it could do more, but you don't want to pay the extra price to get the Adobe Photoshop, this is your best option. Okay, let me show you where you can get this Elements Plus plugin. First, I do want to mention that I'm not getting paid anything for this review. I have no association or connection with Elements Plus. It's just my personal favorite plugin for Photoshop Elements. It's right here at elementsplus.net. And they have different versions of the plugin for each of the different versions of Photoshop Elements. So you match the version you need to your version of Elements. And that's just because Elements changes a little bit each year. So the plugin has to change a little bit to adjust for that version of Photoshop Elements. So you purchase it once for one version. Now, if you do what I do, which is update Elements every single year, then you also have to update this plugin every single year to match. That's okay though, because it's not expensive in the least. Right now, it's just $12. It's been $12 for years. They haven't raised this price in as long as I've used this Elements plugin. So you choose a version that matches your version of Elements, and you're all set to go. Let's go back over here to the Elements Plus page. And this chart goes quite a ways, and it shows you everything that each one of these sections contains and which versions it works with. So you can see what it can do right over here. If you click on one of these things, like the color grading split toning, click on that. It gives you a basic rundown on how this is done and how it works. And it's pretty good. So you can easily see exactly what this will do with your version of Photoshop Elements. Also, something else about this, I am slowly adding in more articles inside of my photo coach for Photoshop Elements. And eventually, I'll have my descriptions on how every single one of these tools is used inside the whole program. So if you want to take a look at this, it's at elementsplus.net. There is a demo version to give that a try. Make sure it's going to work for you. Make sure you download the version that you need. And if you want to find out more about my photo coach program, I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. And I'll see you next time.